Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome. Audio good? Do I sound okay? Hello, <laughs> chat. Hi. <laughs> hello. It's me, Iggy. <laughs> Nice to see everybody here in chat. And let me check a few things actually for. Du, du, du. Yeah, I guess audio is good. <clears throat> but yeah, I guess uh should get started here. Um but before I do, I do want to say hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the stream, and today we're gonna be doing some, uh, we're gonna be doing some drawing, you know, background drawing. It's gonna be a scene in the sky. But before we do that, you know, in case you didn't know, our going community is filled with tons of art nerds, and we art nerds have to stick together. If you want to support us, or, or if you're an art nerd too, uh, be sure to check out the links in our social media in the description below, and to check out our website for class offerings or to get critique guidance and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a youtube channel we're also an art school if you guys want to keep supporting us to make free content consider supporting us by becoming a youtube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes sub badges or supporting us on patreon for as little as two dollars per month where you could get access to tons of perks like my working files critique sessions class recordings and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure Check those out before they're gone. So yeah. Hey yo, welcome. Let's see. Yes, let's just get started. You know, this is gonna be a pretty big stream because we're doing like a whole background. Here as well, and then Gremlin Jess. What do you mean? Gremlin Jess is pretty polished. <laughs> Gremlin Jess, you know, as best as she can be. But yeah, so for today's stream, we'll be learning how to draw a scene in the sky. So I want to share tips like how to start your drawing, how to color it, and more. And what won this week's poll actually is a drawing or a castle in the sky. So look forward to it. We'll be uh, working together to pretty much make a castle in the sky. Word, Gremlin Jess is perfect. So yeah, to start off, um, Whenever we start a big background, right, it's always good to have an idea. And whenever we start an idea, we always start with the simplest version of it. So we're going to do something called thumbnailing. So for thumbnailing, instead of drawing on like an entire piece of paper, right, say like, okay, my castle in the sky, it's going to take up this whole page and like that. This is okay, but it takes a lot of effort. So, it's generally a good idea to do a thumbnail. So a thumbnail, you know, it's kind of like on YouTube, right? You have a, have your video, and then there's a picture. And you're not late. You just came just in time, actually. But yeah, I've never watched Cast in the Sky, actually. But maybe at some point. But thumbnailing. You're making a smaller version of your paper. So if you're drawing on, on paper, you know, you draw like a little rectangle. And if you want, you could measure it and make it smaller if you'd like, you know, put some math in it. But it's up to you. But thumbnailing is good because this way you can only see the important details, right? You don't have to go in and be like, okay, I'll design like this tree or I'll design this really small thing. This way, you can only focus on the important stuff. And then I'll teach a little bit of perspective here so for every background drawing it's generally really good to start with the horizon line so let's see oh I need to check my file a little bit here Control v. Hit. Is that? Yeah. and so the horizon line is pretty much where if I was a camera or if I was a person looking at a scene, 
this is pretty much like the eye level right here. So if you were looking at it, it'd be like that. It lines up perfectly with where your eyes are looking. And so generally, uh, let's see. Let me label my things actually so that it's easier. HL and frame. So anything above the horizon line, we see the bottom of. And then everything below the horizon line, we see the top of. Like this one. Doop, 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 doop. So that's like an easy way to remember uh, the main difference between the two. And so it's really important that you decide where the horizon line is because the horizon line, it's what decides how the scene will go. So for example, right? I'll do a little example. So say you have your horizon line like really high up, right? Like this one. Like there's only like this amount for the top and this amount for the bottom. This means that you see more of the floor the higher it is. Let's see. The stream now. Yeah, glad you could join. <laughs> Welcome. RNS, random number sequence. But for something like this, right? You would want to have the horizon line really high. And in, this, in the context of the stream, where we're making like a sky scene, maybe this is really good for making like a city skyline you know for example i make a vanishing point here which i'll talk about in a little bit so say like right here i want to do like you know the top of like the city you know you can see all the the building tops all the skyscrapers like that and let's see that so this is just a quick example of why you would have the horizon line really high up like this one and then on the sky, right, you would see like right there, maybe there's like a giant statue in the background, just like that. And there. So this is why you would have the horizon line like really high up. <laughs> yeah, it takes practice, don't worry. And I'll show a couple of photo examples in a little bit actually, so that it's easier to grasp. Because I know that perspective drawing, it's a little bit uh, complicated. But it doesn't have to be, you know? You just have to keep it simple. That's what I aim for with my classes. Oh, I drew on the wrong... Oh, it's fine. I did draw on the wrong layer, but it's okay. This is just an example. And so now I'll do another example where the horizon line is really, really low. So say like this. So if the horizon line is really low, that means your eyes are really low. So either you're standing like, like right here, like the thing you're looking at is above and you have to look up, or maybe, you know, you're like, you're crawling for some reason, <laughs> like that, and then you're looking up. <laughs> and so for this type of stuff, you would have everything look really, really big. So this, ki this kind of perspective is perfect, if you want to make something look like really gigantic or really big or for example um if you want to make it look really tall or imposing so like this and then kind of think of like an example maybe this is like an airplane you know you're like looking doop, doop, doop. Yeah, and right now I'm going over it really quickly, just so, you know, we're on the same page. This is what I think about when we're uh, starting perspective drawing. And this is where you guys come in. So I'm going to start a poll, and I want to ask you guys, do you guys want the horizon line, like, really high up? Or do you guys want it, like, really low? So give me a second. So number one, number two. I'm going to make a poll here real quick. Which... Which perspective one I rising or number two? 
glow rising and there you go there i started a poll so uh i'll give it a second yeah water that's another good example actually so let's see so maybe here on like the top example there's like a c on like the the horizon right here that'd be a nice one boop, boop. there then you could see like all the the little beach uh what's it called the parasols i guess right there that's an example and i guess for the high one where everything looks imposing maybe okay this is an airplane maybe it's like a blimp actually maybe a blimp would be a better example so like like that never actually seen a blimp in real life but so cool like a giant air balloon and then like that and then maybe like you know you, you see like the clouds like surrounding it's being parted like that hey welcome yeah now that you just joined you know vote for what kind of rise now you want to see for this drawing okay how is moving castle i've watched one or two times in my lifetime it's pretty good I think if we see, I want to watch Ponyo. Yeah, it's worth watching now, especially like as as you get older, you get more of an appreciation for it. Yeah, like as a kid, you appreciate different things, and then as you go, it changes. And so yeah, I guess um, get your last minute votes in. I'll do like thirty more seconds, maybe just chat. I just want to chat with peeps here as well. But yeah, um, Studio Ghibli really has this vibe to it. You know, it's very calm. It's very nice. They just nailed it. It's laggy. Maybe it's just on your end. Uh, do you... I guess... Let's see. It's green on my end. Word blimps are pretty fun to draw. <laughs> I say, as this is like the first ever blimp I've ever drawn in my life. I don't really draw... <laughs> I draw... I don't draw blimps. But it's pretty cool though. All right, so I think I'm going to end the poll now. Yeah, so High Horizon won out this one. Very nice. I do like the High Horizon as well. Very nice. And, oh, I should have, <laughs> while waiting for the poll results, I should have pulled up the photos right here. And doop doop. Because I do have a couple examples of it actually that i do want to show the chat of course i remember you orange yes i will never forget you but i'll share like specific photos so that it's easier to picture and also this is a really neat tip so say you have like a photograph that you really like and let's see there say you're like wow i really like the perspective of these photos but I don't know how to start off, right? So like I said earlier, it's good to start with the horizon line. So for this one, it's really visible where the horizon line is. It's like right here. And so everything pretty much converges into something called a vanishing point. So I'll show what a vanishing point is in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Or actually, I'll use uh, this example because it's better. Um, how do I talk about this? Because for something like this, right? I said to start with the horizon line, but you don't know where the horizon line is, right? So what you do is you find the vanishing point. So you see how all of these, uh, all of these buildings are sort of converging into like a single line like this one. Boop. And then I'll check this one out. And notice for this one, right? This building, I'm only following this one building right here. Boop. And then I'm going to follow these buildings since they're like pretty similar, right? And you can see that they're all sort of converging at this little mark here. So like right there. And where they're crossing over, that's how you know that this is the horizon line. So if you can't see the horizon line because of how busy it is, you could do the opposite where 
use the vanishing point to figure out where the where the horizon line is. That boop boop. And then on here, I'm gonna do it again. So you can see that well for this one you can sort of see the horizon line. It's like right here. Boop. And then pretty much all of these uh all of these objects are based on the the vanishing point. And I'll show you guys how to how to do that in a little bit. So let me erase that. And since you guys picked the high one, the high horizon line, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of how to start it off. Let me see my notes. Doop doop doop. Good. Put these aside. And again, I do want to remind everybody that I want this to be a good starting off point. So I will talk about stuff that you will need to know, like Horizon 9 and the Vanishing Point and all that. But don't worry, I won't make it too complicated. You know, I'll, I'll show you how to use the basics without needing to like prepare, over prepare, you know, because I know one thing that people are worried about in perspective is that they're worried um, about all the technicalities and all that. Well, I'll show you, show you how I do it. Well, let me put this on the side. Doop, doop. Yes. So let me start off by making a big, big rectangle. Bloop, bloop. So like that. And then you guys wanted a high horizon line, right? So I'm going to start off like right here, maybe. So finding the horizon line in the high horizon line picture is kind of tricky. Yeah, for sure. Like sometimes you just have to estimate, right? I picked the cityscape because it's easy to, to figure out. Because all these buildings are rectangles and like squares and cubes. But for some of them, it will take a little bit of work. So you try to like grid them in, and I'll show you in a little bit, actually. Yes, hello, hello. So where was I? So I put down my horizon line, and already we're giving it context. So I think context is a big word you have to remember for perspective drawing. So I'll show you why. So I got the horizon line. Already we have enough context. So right here, it's just an empty blank canvas we don't know what our background is going to be but i add the horizon line and now we have context now we know that this is like a high perspective we're like looking down on something because there's less of the sky which means that we're probably like up in the sky already right? that's what it means because the horizon line is very high and then here's another common question actually um do you start with the vanishing points first, like this one, or do you draw the object first? So, honestly, for for starting off with something like this, you could do it either way. So, if your heart is set on putting a an object somewhere, so like say, okay, I want to put my object like right here. So, like this is the end of it. So now. I would draw the vanishing point based on where I drew that square. Doop, doop. Right there. And generally, it's really good to start off with the ground right here. So I always start off with the ground plane, and then I build up like this one. So I'm going to build a simple rectangle. And let's see. Let me catch up on chats. It's been happening. <laughs> you gotta go all right well this is recorded anyway so feel free to just rewatch it you know and so i'm gonna make a really tall tall shoebox looking shape here and i forgot to mention we're only doing one point perspective because it's really simple you know it's easy to start off with really easy to grasp and right here, um, on perspective, corners are your best friend. So on this corner, I know that 
gonna do like a straight line up and another straight line up here and I did forget to say actually for one point perspective all vertical and horizontal lines are 90 degrees so they're just like super straight they're not being affected by perspective or anything so this one super straight this one also super straight like that but the sides on the other hand those are the ones that require perspective like this one and i'm only loosely basing it on the ticks you could see so you could grab a ruler and try to get it as accurately as you can is also good maybe i will do that actually just so it's easier to uh easier to picture so let's see so i drew the straight line and then i have the i'll draw the vanishing point like that and then right there like i said corners are your best friend so i i made the line based on the corner or maybe i should make it longer actually i want this to be bigger like that and then i draw this line just like that <laughs> <laughs> More artist friends? Oh yeah. Having artist friends always nice. They get it. Good. So straight lines, and then this is also a straight line, pretty much. This whole face. And Good. <laughs> Yeah, streams streams are always nice because it's an interactive experience, you know. Um I know there's like a specific topic, but you know, you guys can just ask me. Just hit me with your best questions, you know? And there. And I would love to answer them. Beep. And... There we go. And I guess to talk a little bit about what I just did there, right? Let me retrace my steps to explain. So I drew the sides, right? Based on the corners again. Like that. And I was, honestly, this part, I decided where the cube would end because I felt like it. <laughs> There's no really, like, big method to it, but I just thought, okay, this is enough space for me to put my castle in. Because, yeah, I will be drawing a castle as a reminder. And so now, I have this corner. I'm going to start off from there and then do that, just like that, and then... I draw a straight line like that, straight line upwards, or actually, I saved that one for last. I do this corner first, like that. And then you'll know you did it right if these corners line up, which they do. So they line up like that. And now we have a nice cube. Right there. So let me erase that. Do, do, do. And right there. Yeah, so I'm curious uh, for random number sequence. What makes our streams different, you think, from other streams? I'm always curious to hear about what people think. Oh gosh. My voice cracked. <laughs> My voice cracked. Beep. And right there. And where is it? Right there doesn't quite line up but I can fix that Deep. like all right it is very nice our streams are always nice to to watch along with and you get to see how other people do it you know and yeah I know I know that artist perspective a high horizon line and skyscrapers with a batman on it yeah sure well think of me as like a simpler version of that because i think he's like a master honestly so me i wouldn't say i'm a master but i know enough for me to have context and to understand what's happening it's kind of like um understanding what's happening is honestly half the battle you know if you know what's happening all it takes now is practice you know yeah and anyway, to continue on, 
uh, I mentioned earlier, the context is very, very important, right? Because right now, it's true, we have a high horizon line, and we have this box, right? But right now, it's kind of missing something, right? Because how high up is this box, right? Is it on the ground? Because it could be something like this, right? Where maybe this is like, this is like a trench or something. So this is like a sewer. And you can see that um, it looks like we're below somehow. Or like we're looking up still, but then we could see some stuff. Uh, how do I describe it? I'm so bad with, like, with describing my thoughts, but this looks like we're still on the ground, right? But what we want is a scene in the sky, you know? So how do we do that? How do we give the context that it's high up in the sky? Basics. Oh yeah. <laughs> it takes like active like brain power the first time to try and apply it. So you're good. It takes practice. And so what I'll do now is I'm going to add a little bit of context right here. So maybe, let's see. Let me take a look, see a drawing as a whole here. Yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll start off with something simple that doesn't need the perspective line, which is clouds. So I'm going to draw some clouds like surrounding the uh, our castle here. Because right now, it's uh, it's not looking like anything. It's just the box, you know. So maybe I'm going to add this. And then maybe I'm going to add the top of a mountain, like right here. So these ones, um, you won't really need the perspective grid too much. All you need to remember is the simple principle that I taught, where everything above the horizon line, you see that the bottom of, right? And everything below the horizon line, you see the top of. So it's a very simple concept. And if you're starting off with perspective, you know, don't overthink it. That's all you really need to know, like this stuff right here, like some of the basics of making a shape and remembering this simple little concept right here. I honestly don't know what to call it. It's just like a, just a me thing. It's the Iggy principle or something. I don't know. <laughs> but then, let's see. Let me erase that. Erase the clutter. And then maybe there's like uh, more clouds at the other end. Let me erase that, actually. So... there maybe draw a faint rounded line to act as the earth below yeah that would be cool as well so make it slightly rounded i know what you mean but i don't think i'm that high up for mine so i don't think i will do that because um i had the reference earlier and it didn't really curve despite it being like really high so i want it to be the same perspective Word. Friday Friday was a special stream, and I hope we do more of it. Really fun. Glad you guys could make it to that one. And let's see. I want there to be like a an ocean at the very end here. And let's see. And again, right now, we need a little bit more context, right? So now we have the ocean. And we have this mountain, but I want to make it look gigantic, right? Because right now, you could you could pass it as like an ant hill, like a tiny hill, and then like it's really small. This is like a beach parasol, and it's only actually like this big, you know. And then we got like a, a sand castle right here. So even though we added the context that we have mountains and the ocean, we're gonna need a little bit more. So push it a little bit more. And I'll do that by maybe... Hmm. You gotta be creative with this one. Uh, it's also good to have a full view of the drawing. Because I'm not sure how to, where to go with it afterwards. 
So maybe like a river? I'm trying to think if a river would be nice. Mm, maybe not. Because I'm also trying to think of other stuff to add over here. Hmm. Putting something in front of it. Oh, true. That's called the foreground. So I will talk about that in a little bit, actually. You guys are spoiling my stream. <laughs> so, hmm. Because there's a lot of space right here, actually. So maybe I'll start over, actually. Uh, let's see. Put this. Let's get that. Doot. Doot. And put that aside. And take this down. Also, this is the important thing about thumbnailing. Um, we're trying to decide what the final look is, right? So it's good to take your time. Uh, don't rush this part. Because this is the very foundation. You know, the stuff that you can't change at the very end. So be careful. Wait. And so... The thing I don't like about this first one is that I think our castle space, it's a little bit too much to the right. I think I want it to be closer to the center. And... Deep. <laughs> yeah, you got it right. See, everyone has like an innate sense, right? Even if you... Uh, even if you think you don't know, you know. And that's what I really want to encourage, you know. I want to encourage the confidence. Just have that confidence to try new things. So, I'm trying to see. Maybe, maybe like this, actually. I want it to be closer to the camera as well. There. Closer to the center, closer to the camera. And I think this time around, I'll be... I'll be speedrunning it. Because I already explained what goes into it. And so now, I'm just going to do a quicker, messy version. Beep. Right there. And erase that. Nope. There we go. Erase you, you, you. And then I'm going to add the mountains back because I thought that was a really nice idea. Right there. Just, there's uh, mountains in the foreground right here. And then the midground. And then the background. I guess I could talk about it right now. Um, the foreground is the thing that's closest to the camera. So like maybe right here, there's like a mountain blocking the camera. Maybe it's a camera or maybe it's a, a person like a person's point of view. Or like a camera like that. So this is the closest thing to your perspective. And usually, you don't really put too much attention to it, right? And then the midground, that's where everything happens pretty much. This is where, generally where you want people to look, like right here. This is your free real estate, you know, this is where you draw everything. And then the background, the background is generally the stuff above the horizon line. So, you know, like clouds and all that so yeah and what time is it okay i will wrap up the uh, sketch very soon right there so i want the the ocean and then the sky I'm trying to think of how to add like clouds to here Maybe I'll add like clouds like this. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to decide how high up we are. So I'm trying to figure out what kind of clouds to draw. So remembering the simple concept I taught earlier, I'm experimenting with the shape of the clouds. So you can see that this is above the horizon line. So I was thinking, what if the clouds are shaped like this, you know, where you could see the very bottom of it, like that. But it doesn't look natural to me, so maybe I won't do that. Let me erase that. Mm. 
Or maybe before I add the clouds, I'll just draw in what I think the castle should be. Maybe make the clouds follow the perspective line as if they're moving that away. Oh, that way. Yeah, I was thinking that as well. Uh, that's a really good suggestion, actually. Arnes. It's a really long name, so I'll just call you Arnes. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah, that's a really good um, concept to think of. You know, leading lines to your... To your... Uh, what's it called? Composition, I guess. <laughs> Arnes. Because uh, it's like RNG, you know, random number generator in video games. So that's what I think of. Arnes. And so right now, I was thinking that my castle, it's going to be on like a floating island. Like right here. And I'll show you how I do it. So I made this cube, not because I, I was going to conform to it. I'm using this cube for context, right? So this cube... It's pretty much like the bounding block, where everything is contained within this cube. So, again, like I said earlier, I like to start off with the floor plan right here, because the floor... Floor space is very important in, in anything, really. And so now I plan the floor. Now I'm gonna draw the bottom. There's like a... Like a floating... Uh, what's it called? I guess it's like a stalactite? I could never tell the difference, so there's stalag and then stalag, stalag might, stalag type, because those are like the things in the caves, like the little spiky points, but I never know which is which, like, which is which, I don't know, yeah, that's just a little tangent, <laughs> and then I think I'm just gonna draw like a little basic castle right here i'm gonna draw like i think for this one i won't focus too much on the castle design because i want to focus on the uh the concept as a whole and normally i would talk a lot about how to design a castle but this time around i'll try to breeze through it Ooh, stalagmite is ground up Stalactite is ceiling down. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> that's a really easy way to remember it actually. Stalag stalag ground. Noted. See today I learned. <laughs> and I guess again with the, the cube, like talking about context again, instead of drawing the lines again like super accurately like making a, another cube you could do that right that's a that's definitely a possibility but for me i'm just gonna breeze through it i'm not gonna spend too much time like uh building it up so like that and like that and it's getting real messy, actually. I should have drawn on a different layer. What was I thinking? So I'll start erasing bits and pieces right here. Doop, doop. A pillar. <laughs> mites. The so, like, mites. Yeah, you guys are teaching me like really good <laughs> examples. Doop. And let's see. I just realized I didn't have my BGM playing for my end. Let me. Let me play it on my end. BGM. Here it is. Doot. But I have no idea what kind of castle should look like. So maybe... I'll just uh, make something up real quick. Doot. Doot doot. It's gonna be re very abstract. Just because I really do want to get to coloring and everything. So what time is it? Okay, I got like... Lots of time. About like 50 minutes or so. And then... To maybe... Draw that, that, that. 
and then I'm going to follow the perspective line like that just a little bit loosely and then right here actually this is a really important point so you see this is the horizon line okay at this point we're seeing the bottom of it but this time around we're gonna not see the bottom of it because it's above the horizon line now so now say I added like another spire right here notice that if I follow the perspective line you're gonna see the bottom of the little tower I guess so like that <clears throat> just like that yeah <laughs> sky things yeah for sure this is image for animation this is a concept art so I'm making a castle in the sky pretty much and right here let me erase this because right now I don't really have like a full idea of what this castle is going to be doop, doop. then I'm going to add like a little tower right there I think I'm going to make it like a really wacky looking castle <laughs> stalactites stalagmites Doop. and Hmm. I'm trying to think, because right now it kind of looks like a barn than a castle. <laughs> um, maybe more towers. More towers. You can never go wrong with it. Doop, doop. And then right there, the floor space. And then loosely base the line on the the uh vanishing point there because when it comes to concept art it's always important to describe the uh the scene itself as a whole so there usually if i have more time i would you know pay attention to the perspective but i want to show you guys the whole process Doot, doot. And I think I'm going to lean in on the full um, wacky looking castle sort of look. I'm going to make things asymmetrical and all that. Yeah, also, you could tell I don't draw backgrounds very often, but you know, as long as you know, as long as you know the basic, uh, what's it called? Basic concepts should be fine. Yeah, I think we have something going here, actually. So I'm making towers of like varying sizes right here. Then I'm gonna add like a tip. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of the stuff I would build in Minecraft. So maybe just like a little, a simple pyramid at the top. I'll call this. Call this my simple little castle right there. Doop. Maybe I'll add like a spire. Like that. Yeah, I really wanted to add these little curves because, you know, it's in the clouds and it, I don't know, it just feels like it would fit. It would fit the whole aesthetic of it being in the clouds. There. Yeah. The final piece gonna be a painting or is it gonna have lines? Good question. It'll be a painting. I will not do line art for this. It's gonna take a bajillion years to do line art. But maybe I'll do a mix of both, you know? So, let's see. Now, I guess to recap a little bit, right? You see how I used the cube. I didn't use the cube as like a, something I followed to a T. I only used it to give me context. So, you could... You could honestly put as much, um, what's the word? It's up to you to decide how detailed and how accurate you want your drawing to be. So mine is kind of loosey-goosey, you know? I didn't really use every single perspective, you know, to measure, to measure the tower, each and every tower in perspective, but what I did instead, I made one big square, one big cube to give me context on how to do the perspective. Yeah. 
So maybe I'll add clouds actually surrounding the bottom here. And then finally, this is always the nicest part. Get rid of the bounding box. And then erase that, erase that. There we go. Have a nice clear idea going on so far. And I think I'll add more clouds, like kind of swirling around. So like, let's see. That. I'm trying to see if this would look nice. Uh, there. Okay, I'll just say that this mountain actually, this is really nice that I added. So this is the foreground. That's a nice uh, change of pace. It breaks up the... It kind of frames everything. And a nice, nice little bow. Don't show. I don't draw. Do you think I want to draw? <laughs> yeah, someone. It's about... It's not really about how hard you work. It's about how smart you work. Like, I know it sounds like, wow, so stereotypical. It's how smart you work. But it really is true because it's not about, like, brute forcing it. It's about being really smart about how you work out. So I'll show you what I mean. Like for this one, right? You saw how I started over? I didn't start over because I'm like, okay, I need to learn how to draw this really fast, right? I started over because I found mistakes in it. So the technique to learning really fast is to draw something and then to notice what your shortcomings are and then try to find a way to fix it. And it's a really... Honestly, it's a really frustrating process, right? It's really slow, and you gotta be, like, sort of sort of mean to yourself sometimes, right? But you gotta find that balance of, like, okay, I could've done this better, to be honest. So, I started over, and... And, uh, after learning from those mistakes, I'm like, okay, I'll do that differently, or I won't do that anymore. So, yeah, it's a nice, nice way to, uh kind of learn so learn smart that's what i mean by that not about how fast you do it not about how fast you learn it's about how fast you pick up you know how fast you pick up on what to change or what to do differently what to stick with you know and so right there i think i really like the clouds that i drew here or let's see i think this cloud's wrong actually So right there. <laughs> yeah, so I'll show you another confusing thing, actually. But yeah, you're welcome, Saman. But for here, right, you can see that this cloud is above the horizon line. But that's actually pretty misleading. Because this doesn't mean that you would see the bottom of this cloud. It just, uh, you have to remember that this is a 3D space, right? So, think of this place as 3D. So technically, if I made a bounding box for this cube, it'll be like right here. And you can see that it's still below the horizon line. So be careful of that, okay? So think of everything 3D, 3D shapes. It's not very literal, right? So just because this part is above the horizon line, it doesn't mean that you're gonna see the bottom of it, right? Because if you look at it, from here, the bounding box, it's right here. It's all below the horizon line. So be careful of that. Easy trap to fall into. That. I'm gonna add the beach right here. I still want to add the beach below. And already, right, with the amount of clouds that I'm adding, I'm adding lots of context, making people think like, wow, this is really high up, right? And you can see like mountain tops. And now I could do better. I'm gonna add like little bits and pieces right here. So you makes you think that those are grass, right? But in actuality, those are like treetops. That's like the thing I'm picturing right here. And uh, yeah, the more you draw, the smarter. Yeah, exactly. It's like a perfect balance, right? You 
you kind of brute force it sometimes where like okay i need to learn how to draw fast which is a good skill to have as well because you don't overthink but then at the same time learn what you need to do differently you know that's the technique at least that's my technique you know and with that being said i think we got our sketch we got a sketch right here got our nice thumbnail and let's see yeah that was it let me erase some of the mess right here so now let's see let me sort out my file here Beep. copy paste dip, dip, dip. put this on the side you know have a nice like process board right here so i could hide you and this time i will copy paste so the purpose of the thumbnail right now we we work really hard for less effort you know we have all these details down and now if you're doing this traditionally you will have to like i guess unfortunately you gotta redo everything but then for digital you could just like scale it up right this one so i guess when you're working uh traditionally try to work around what you have right so let's see and let me arrange my file before i continue right there but, uh, hmm. i'm trying to think of what else i missed but i think it's all good oh thank you but yeah peter that is the dream yeah, I think my thumbnail was not very accurate to the size of my paper, but I guess that's okay. We work with it. And so now I'm going to start off, actually. Um, do you guys have any suggestions on what the sky color should be? Like, do you guys want it to be golden hour? Do you guys want it to be midday? But yeah, Peter, that's the dream. Working, working, or not working. You know, just uh, making a living off of art. Make it orange, teal, ooh, golden orange, sunset. Okay. Guess while I, let me drink some water actually. I've been doing lots of talking. Pole time? Uh, I'm not sure I would do a pole for this one. I think this is a landslide and people People want to do golden hour. So I will do golden hour. Let's see. But I will put my own twist to it. Because golden hour, I've done it a bajillion times. So, beep. Yeah. I love me my golden hour, but... I want to put a little twist to it, you know? Beep. Maybe I'll add a little bit more red. Right there. And maybe purple. There. So for for digital art, it's important to have, like I said, context is the word of the day, I think. Right now I'm doing the whole background. Just because it's very helpful in setting the mood for the colors that you pick. Right? So right there. And I'm trying to see. So this is going to be, I'm going to make a bright yellow for the, for the horizon right here. Always nice. Deep. Deep. Nice palette choice. Golden. Yeah, exactly. It's a nice blue. And then, I'm going to move a little bit more to pink. Yeah, add that magenta to it. And you can see how I start, right? I'm starting off with broad strokes. Broad strokes, the name of the game. And then I know I want it to be like green planes right here. So I'm gonna use my airbrush and only lightly dip it. And then color pick it. And that's gonna be the color of my greens. Right here. Beep. Right there. 
actually, let me just make this whole thing clipping layer just to make it easier. And maybe I'll add a little bit more green actually. So I'll oh, use my airbrush again. Just a touch more green. Uh, too green actually. So maybe this. Yeah, I feel like this is nice. Yeah, exactly. Like the sun, the sunlight, and the god rays leaking out. That's something for last. So best for last. This is why I wanted to get through with the sketch as fast as possible. And hmm, I'm trying to think of like the mountain top colors. Maybe it'll be like a nice. Nice blue green, you know, the trees are like doot, doot. should lower my stabilization. Doot, doot. Oh, right. Gotta cover it up myself. There we go. And let's see. I'll do the uh, castle now. I'll do like a little blotch for the castle. A little blotch for now. There. And that. Just like that. Yeah. And I'll see if I want to do it on one layer actually. So I'll copy paste. But more likely than not, with the time we have, I think I'm going to do it <laughs> with one one layer. Normally I would spend a lot of time, but I do want to share some coloring tricks that I I like to use myself. So, there, there. Deep, deep. And this block is kind of like a placeholder. It's not going to be my final color, but... Just nice, you know, because the castle is still going to be the main focus, even after everything. Deep. Then maybe like the other corners actually peeking, like right there. Boom. And already we can see it like coming together, right? If I turn off the sketch, I have like the, the whole thing coming together. And so, maybe I'll make it a little bit lighter actually. Or not too light. Maybe this light. Actually, this is dark enough um, now that I look at it. And now I'm going to lower it even more right there. Let's see what people are saying. Yeah, God Rays are... I don't know. It's just a common name that I hear. They call it God Rays. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. It's so good. I wish you were here for the entire thing, you know? You could draw like me. Let's go. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to darken it a little bit. So remember, actually, a big tip right here. Save the darkest colors for last. Because lots of contrast, right? It uh, Contrast is what draws the eye, okay? So I'll show you an example. So say I have, like, this color. Like, so you have this color, right? And then the light is only like this, right? But then you have something like this where it's like, boom, the darkest, the darkest shadow and then the brightest light. Immediately, people would look here instead of this one. Because this one, there's not much of a difference, right? Not much contrast. So be sure to save the darkest colors because look, if I add a really dark color, it's going to attract a lot of attention, right? So... Try to think of it that way. Try to think of contrast, you know. There. <laughs> Whoa. But anyway. <laughs> Back to it. Um, where was I? I was drawing... Alright, I was gonna put the ocean up right here. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, it takes time, you know. It doesn't happen overnight i mean even i still think i could get better you know still working at it so uh just be patient it uh it does just take time you know 
And I'm going to use the airbrush to add a little bit of color right here. Doo -doo. And also, I'm not going to lie, improving. A lot of it is also your mental. If you're kind of like, oh man, like I wish, I wish I was uh, good, you know, if you have like a bad mindset, it's going to be harder because your brain, now it has to handle like all these like, all these thoughts of like insecurity and also you got to learn. So it's like two things at a time, right? So try to, try to keep it balanced, you know, because your brain can only handle so much, your brain and heart. So yeah, take it easy, you know, if you did your best today and like, you know, it wasn't enough, there's always tomorrow. It just happens. And let's see. Doop. Let me turn on my lights. What time is it actually? Okay, we're making a good time. Woo! Yeah, baby. Okay, what was my sketch again? Let me... Right, I had clouds. That's what I'm forgetting. Yeah, it's nice because you guys, you guys learned from Jesse yesterday some cool clouds, quote unquote. But, <laughs> uh, how sweet. I'm flattered that I'm your idol, but don't worry, you will get there. Also, it's really important, you know, have fun with it because if you have fun with it, you'll have that motivation, you know, you'll have that drive. That's just as important as learning your fundamentals yeah think of it this way right it's important to learn how to drive right you learn all the stop signs all the road hazards and all that but if you're scared of driving you're never going to learn how to drive <laughs> so like your mental is very important right here so there Oh, let me start off like that. And is this the castle? It is the castle. So I'm gonna, what? Okay, there we go, below the castle. There, there. <laughs> and right there, I'm gonna draw like a little cloud. And you can see here, the way I'm drawing the clouds, it's very deliberate. I'm not just randomly placing clouds right here. The way I'm drawing them, uh, I'm drawing them in such a way that it encircles the castle, you know? So it's like that. The clouds are kind of going in like this spiral sort of thing. Because I want the castle to be the main focus. And while I'm drawing this, I'm actually telling people, look at this. Look at this one. It's so cool. So I'm gonna draw like a little circle around it. So try to take a stuff like that, you know, as you draw. And let's see. Hmm. I'm trying to think of how else to go about this. Uh, there. I think I'm gonna add a little itty bitty cloud right here. there and all right <laughs> yeah hope you had fun in our stream and let's see i'm gonna add more clouds at the bottom right here so it's good to have like that little variation and yeah you could see that Making the clouds smaller and smaller, it adds like this nice effect to it. So it really makes it, it adds the, the atmosphere, I guess, the depth of it. So let's see. Yeah, I'll make the clouds down here a little bit more pink actually. So I'll add like, I use my airbrush to do that. Yeah, and here's the thing. I'm not really using special brushes or anything. I'm just using the airbrush. Like the the hard brush and the airbrush. That's all I'm really using right now. And so right now, I didn't like how blue 
the clouds are. So I want it to match it with like the the redness of everything. Do I have an Insta account? Yes, I do. It's on my it's on the Wing Canvas website. It's like uh, right next to me. If you look to my right, it's right there. But yeah, do check it out. I'm pretty sure it's in the instructors section. So yeah. How is the overall painting? I'm glad you asked. Um, like I, like I mentioned earlier, broad strokes first, and then I go into the mid, to like the the details afterwards. So I will show you in a little bit. After I feel like, I have uh, added enough context to my thingy here. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll make this darker actually, this uh, mountain. And I'll fix this mountain ridge right here. Also, I'll show you a classic concept artist move. I always see people do this where you have the foreground, boom, person looking at it. I mean, I don't think I'll do it here, but it's just a suggestion. People like to do this. And then there's like a road or something. And then they have like a traveling bag, a backpack. I mean, it's a classic, but I don't think I will do it here. But let's see. I'm going to lay down my... Uh, what's it called? I'm going to lay down my base colors right here on the castle. So I'll brighten this up a little bit there so i guess i want it to be like a cloud castle so that i don't have to worry too much about the uh what's it called the uh what am i i'm losing words <laughs> i don't have to worry about the color okay there we go it's just gonna be monochromatic because it's a cloud castle i think and so now i'm gonna go in there and i'm gonna add all the darker parts now so like i said Add the uh, darker parts afterwards. Or actually, let me brighten this up a little bit. So we know that the sun is coming from there. So maybe I'll add a little bit of light actually before I add the add the shadows right here. So I'm still not doing anything special. I'm just using the airbrush, right? Put it right there. Right there. I'm adding some nice rim lighting to it. Boom, boom. And let's see. And let me turn off my sketch. Yeah, I think we have a nice thing going here. Okay. And you can see how low my sketch is, right? It's not the main focus. So right there. Now that I have all the nice, nice, nice light, I will now add the nice, nice shadows right here and you can see that i'm not starting off with the darkest of the dark shadow right i'm only adding like a medium i'd say medium shadow and let's see yeah so <laughs> also this is another nice thing nice tip so i already know that my time is never enough because the streams are so short. This is also why um, I work with my limits. So right here, I know that it's going to be a lot of time to get the perspective accurate. So now I kind of did the nice in between where I still use perspective, but I have lots of nice curves to it, you know. So all these nice curves, I won't have to worry about uh perspective and at the same time uh i'm still using it i'm kind of rambling <laughs> i'm not gonna lie <laughs> but this is because i'm in my zen mode now that now that we have all the context you know we've worked really hard to get to this point this is the victory lap you know you just have to draw that's why it's worth it it's worth it to uh plan ahead because now, boom, I'm just uh, drawing lines. 
adding some shadows onto my to my little cloud castle right here Yeah, instead of it being like a nice, uh, what's it called? Nice straight wall, I think I'll add like nice waves to it. Right there. So work with your limits. Right there. Excuse me. But of course, if you have like unlimited time, uh, what's stopping you from, you know, learning? And actually taking the time to make straight lines, right? So I'm not saying this is the the be-all end-all way of doing this one painting. Because there's so many different ways you could do a painting, right? It just depends on what you uh, what your goal is. So always always do stuff with a purpose, you know. Don't just don't just uh, do whatever, you know. Even just a little little amount of thoughts is enough. Right there, little castle, little <laughs> the little ice cream poopy swirl, I guess. Right there, I like it. Or and then, uh, there, there. Yeah, I really like these uh, curvy shapes because it really is reminiscent of what you call it of clouds you know nice and free there here yeah there might be like a handful of perspective mistakes here but i think the important part here is that i'm getting my idea across so that's my main goal for this one well, let's see Right there, I just hid my my line art. And now I stretch. Ooh. I'm stretching. I've been drawing for so long. Well, not really. But. Okay, now. I don't need the sketch anymore because I added enough shadows and light to give me some context here. And so now I'm going to add more shadows like on here 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 and very important tip right here i started off with really soft uh, shading right so now i'm hardening i'm hardening all the lines that i made so that it doesn't look as blurry because when you use the the airbrush you know use it wisely you don't just use it to to draw and then you call it a day I use it because it's very loose and it helps me get my ideas across really fast. Because with hard edges, you gotta make decisions, right? You gotta make like solid decisions. But with soft ones, you could be like, oh, okay, maybe I could move this around a little bit, you know, change it. But for this one, you could see now I'm starting to harden up the. The shapes here and now I'm starting to add like the darker colors right here so remember lightest to darkest especially for traditional because for traditional there's it's really hard to go back and erase stuff doop, doop, doop. There. yes the ice cream poopy swirl I have coined the term This is the poopy castle. And right there. And let's see. And again, like I said, right? Save the brightest and the darkest colors for last. So you can see that I'm only adding the darkest shadows sparingly right here. I'm not using it willy-nilly here. Doop, doop. Pressing real lightly, right here, there, and then I'm only really 
adding it on like the corners where light can't reach like that and what else let me zoom out let me zoom out yeah, so we have a nice nice little drawing going on here and how many more minutes i got i got 10 minutes so oh my gosh i actually made good time so now i'm gonna add some brighter colors so i'm gonna add some little cloud swirls yeah i hear this a lot people are like don't take shortcuts um yeah it's true don't take shortcuts but when you do because sometimes you will have to try to make up for it i like to tell my students this <laughs> make up for your shortcuts so like right here i'm not really adding anything on the on like the land that the castle is on so i'm just adding like these little like cloud swirls to make it look cool my shortcut is that i did not draw any details on the the island and so i'm making up for it by adding like these really nice like hazy hazy clouds right here and then let's see make it darker Boop. I'm gonna add like wacky window designs here. And then maybe like here. Here. But yeah, I guess what do you guys think so far? Do you guys want any like do you guys have any suggestions actually to add? Let me know. Let me know in chat. Okay, maybe I will add a little bit of context. I will add like trees just to show how absolutely gigantic this uh this castle is in reality. Looks awesome. Yeah, thank you. Maybe a of course, a waterfall. Classic. Why didn't I think of that? Uh hold on. I'm gonna add a waterfall in a little bit after I add these trees here. Okay, right now, again, I need more context because what are these, right? They look like little bushes, actually, instead of trees. So now I'm going to try to think of something. Um, I'm trying to think of something that people know how big it is. Um, maybe like a little house. <laughs> I'll just say this is like a maid house or something. Um, maybe there's like a little little house right here doop doop you can barely see it but there house there you go now we, people know how big it is because there's a little house a windmill a dragon a dragon would be too much for 10 minutes <laughs> but i will add the waterfalls let's see you know classic waterfalls leaking out of the uh the bottom of the bottom of the floating island doop, doop. yeah it's kind of like an avatar the the blue one where pandora has like the floating islands right there and then i'm gonna try to make this darker actually or make it brighter add some Bright lights. Now I'm gonna use my use my 3D magic, my digital magic. Just because usually I would uh, go in there and manually do the light and shadow, but we don't got time, so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit and multiply blue shadow. Well, too blue. So I'm going to make this part darker, just a little bit. Here. Alright, actually, I'm going to add, like, I'm going to add some light. So, say, like, just to make it feel more lived in, you know, so. Maybe there's, like, light here. Doop. 
That doesn't look good, actually. <laughs> but oh well. A bird, yeah. Could be. But... I don't know. Because I still have to do the uh, the background. That's still a good suggestion, though. Just that I don't think I can do it. I could do it justice, you know? Like, if I do it, it'll feel, like, tacked on. And so, sadly, I don't think I could add the lights. I would have loved to, but... Um, I'm gonna... This is the speed run part. Adding some shadows. There. Hmm. Vines on the castle? Could be, yeah. That's a good idea, but... I think I really need to work on everything else other than the castle. <laughs> so, I'm a speedrun. Right now. Any percent. And... And add some for example I'm gonna add some shadow onto the onto the clouds here. Doot, doot. There. It's a nice it's a nice blue shadow compared to like the the pink. And then on here. I said there were mountain tops here and I forgot to add them, so I will do that. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, maybe this shadow? Okay, that's good, actually. I'm gonna add little bits and pieces of a shadow right here. And you can see it's not much detail, you know, compared to the, the castle. I'm just adding little bits and pieces. And then some green. Nice green mountains right there. Maybe you blur the mountains near the camera. That could, yeah, you're right. But let's see. Um, what time is it? Okay, speed run. I don't really like blurring, but let's see. I will try it since it's a suggestion. Yeah, like this one. It could work, I guess. Yeah. I'm gonna blur it a lot. Hmm. Okay, maybe not that much. I will make it dark, though. I will make it darker. Doop. Maybe tone down a bit. Yeah. There. Something like this, I think, would be nice. I still really want to do the light idea, though. So I will add, like, orange lights and stuff. Like orange light right here, and then I'm gonna add some lighting in a little bit. Just as like a nice nice contrast to everything. And let's see. Just adding some like nice actually maybe there's like a big window here. Genius. Maybe this is like one big window here and then here. And glow dodge. Glow dodge is my favorite. In case you can in case you couldn't tell, because look at this. Boom. Nice lighting. Nice easy peasy lighting. And again, for concept art, it's all about getting your idea across, right? Honestly, I could spend more time, but my main goal for this one is to get all my ideas across, right? So I wanted to do a cloud castle. I wanted to look really high up. So I think I'm like checking all those boxes, right? And let's see. I'll add another one, like right here. Doop, doop. There. And glow dodge, show time. Looks so peaceful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully it helped. You know, that's uh, that is my main goal. A rim light on the mountains. That's a really good suggestion, actually. I will try. Boop. Glow dodge. Er. Glow dodge. Hmm. 
I think that would be better on the clouds, actually, than on the, uh... Because the clouds... The clouds are way closer to what we want the people to focus on, so I will do it on the clouds, right there. Doot, doot, doot. And... Hi! <laughs> Thank you! Hmm... I think I could make the change the, the sky color a little bit actually. I'm gonna add some clouds in the background because I feel like I've neglected the background. Yeah, you could really see, you know, you could keep adding stuff, you know, lots of ways to make it pop even more. Hmm, what about a river on the ground connected to waterfalls above? I think that's too complicated for, for now because a river, you know, it's a nice line. But let's see, if I try to add a river right now, it makes it look a little bit busy. Well, it could work, like this one, right? It's very subtle. It's not like the main focus, like that. But you have to be careful about that because um, we already have the clouds like kind of swirling around. So try not to have too much elements, but that is a good suggestion. You know, you could make it work. I'm not saying it's p not possible, but it could be overwhelming, you know? So be careful of making your drawing overwhelming. And actually, I think I'll add a few more shadows and then I'll call it, call it a stream. So this is what I like to do. I like to merge it all together and then I'll add more shadows. More shadows on the stalactites. Yeah, today I learned they're stalactites. And what else? Yeah, I feel like I could add one more actually. One more like window right here. And glow dodge. Doop, doop, doop. And then I merge it together again. And I'm gonna add more dark parts actually. Just to make the light look slightly, slightly, slightly brighter. There. There. And I think I'm gonna call my drawing here. I think I'm donezo. So I hope you guys learned a lot about my process on how to do a, a, a scene in the sky. You know, sort of like a concept art sort of workflow. And yeah, thank you. Work really hard. This is like my color palette that I'd like to use. I don't know. It just works. These are like the colors I like to use. And um, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I want to say. Other than I had lots of fun. And I hope you guys keep suggesting more stuff for us to do. But before I formally like sign off, I want to remind you guys that, you know, we're in art school too. So if you want to check us out, you can check out the website right next to me. You know, I'm a teacher, so it's possible that you could have me as a teacher and you know you can support us on patreon to uh, get my working file this stuff and you get critiques and then for youtube you could get like special member stuff like like sub what's it called like emotes and stuff and sub badges like uh yeah other than that i hope you guys have a good one so you have a good weekend yeah bye bye see ya